good morning. Thank you for dialing in today. Um, we have got quite a few people registered this morning, so we're just going to wait a moment or two to allow everybody to join um, and get comfortable before we begin. So we'll be just starting shortly. We're just letting everybody else get settled and comfortable. OK, great. People are coming in in their numbers. Brilliant. OK, great. Well, let's begin. Good morning. My name's Faith Denning and I'm a marketing manager here at InfoTrack. Like welcome you to today's webinar where we're going to learn more about property report and in particular how it can support your quality and compliance commitments. I'm delighted to be joined by Liz Campbell today, our legal content analyst from InfoTrack, who will be talking you through today's session. So before I hand over to Liz and we begin the webinar, I would just like to draw your attention please to the Q&A tab which is located at the bottom of your screen. We will be running a question and answer at the end of this session, so please type in any questions that you might have for Liz, along with your name, into the Q&A box and that way if we do run out of time or your question re requires further clarification, we can extract your information and follow up with you directly after the webinar. So I'm going to hand you over to Liz now um, and I hope everybody enjoys it. Thanks Liz. Thank you. So my name's Liz. <laughs> I work within the property um, report team um, and I essentially I, I specialise in the content of property report. So my day to day really consists of reading legislation, um, the compliance regulations, um, speaking with authorities that govern um, the guidelines and, um, you know, talking to people like yourself and really getting to the root of um, what people, clients want from the product. So um, what's really fun about working with Property Report is I, I get to wear many hats and um, you know do something different every day. I'm really grateful to be here today and speaking with you all to talk about this product um, for about 20 minutes <laughs> straight. Um, so the purpose of this webinar is to essentially focus on the quality and compliance when it comes to reporting, you know, at the very core of the product, um, property report was really born from the understanding that solicitors don't have time and moreover, um, report on titles are not um, regulated, meaning that there is no legislation on what to include. There are guidelines um, and protocols, but there is no law. And so now this um, this combination of a lack of time and a lack of a reporting standard that's a very dangerous combination it often leads to um, errors missed information and litigation so during this webinar i'll be going through the um solicitors uh, a, a solicitors disciplinary tribunal case uh, the sra principles and the protocol um, and the importance of having a firm wide standard when it comes to reporting so i um, will just flip to the other slide so this is a case sorry, one sec. There we go. so this is a case um, from 2019 the decision was in 2020 so it's fairly recent and um, essentially the overview of what happened in this scenario was that the defendant who was a senior partner with an unblemished record was fined £10,000 for inadequately advising their clients of risks. So the facts were the client was buying four off plan new build properties. Um, the developer involved went bust and the SRA found that the purchaser had not clearly advised on the various obvious risks involved with purchasing off plan. So um, these are some direct quotes from the um, decision. So the solicitor, or he failed to adequately advise his clients in investing in full property development schemes about the high risk inherent in the schemes. So the solicitor in question, what's important to note that the solicitor in question did actually um, give a very broad um, advice to the client. They told them to seek independent advice when it comes to these risks. However, the SRA confirmed that um, because the client was inexperienced, um, the solicitor was expected to give them a much broader scope um, of the retainer and their duties than with um, you know, a more experienced client. So that's a really important takeaway from the case. Um, the vagueness about your responsibilities when it comes to um, each client is very um, situational. So, I mean, 
I know you all are muted um, and so this is a question just to think about how many times have you created a report on title where large risks have been sort of addressed with a really broad disclaimer just sat in the report. So the SRA principles um, that were deemed to have been neglected in this uh, case by the defendant were uh, principle four to act in the best interest of each client, uh, principle five uh, to provide a proper standard of service to the client and principle six to behave in a way that maintains trust in the public um, places. So I'll just address the first principle. When using property report, you can be assured that you know, these principles will be upheld and that the content is um, written for the buyer's interests. Um, Primarily, so I'm just going to share my screen so you can see property report. Just one sec. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. So, so what's important about property report is that we um, have written the content with the first time buyer in mind. Um, we explain and define all the areas of conveyancing, from explaining what um, a register is to explaining more, more complex things like a long stop date. We provide explanatory text that is specific for each tenure type. So for example, um, so what you're seeing now is an example of a new build property report. I think new builds are a, a great example of um, the sort of care and attention and that, that duty of care that we provide um, clients. So you can provide for the client. So here. We have a dedicated section about the new build completion process. So, you know, it explains the intricacies of the risks that um, come with this sort of uh, tenure type or this purchase transaction. You know, what's really important to remember is that the person buying the property, you know, for, for most people, you know, this is the biggest expense they'll they'll ever make in their life. And it's really stressful. And then in this new build scenario, you add on so many more stressful factors. They are buying off plan and they've never seen the property. The property may look um, different from the brochures. They um, don't know when they're going to move in exactly. They could be, um, there could be huge delays. Their mortgage could be expiring. The developer go, could go bust. And that's really, really scary. What we provide here is content that sort of empowers the buyer and gives them understanding because because essentially when you have a worried buyer what they're going to be doing is calling you and you know needing that sort of hand holding and hopefully with this content as you guide them through the process as you um, define each step um, you sort of um, yeah empower them and give them the sort of autonomy to um, understand the risks and you know not need to be um, being handheld so much so um, this was a really um, wonderful section um, within the report because it um, goes over all those intricacies and risks for a new build property specifically so um, Another way, so the SRA principle six, um, to behave in a way that maintains public trust. Um, so we have a dedicated content team um, here at InfoTrack that sole responsibility is to um, make sure that the content is up to date and legally accurate. Um, so going back to the point about the lack of time, we understand that you know the average person in the profession does not have the time to be manually updating their Word document template. Um, that's a really time costly job when using um, property report. You know you're assured that the content is legally up to date. We have a team that is constantly talking to people like yourselves, um, researching legislation, and you will be seeing um, consistent content changes and updates. Um, because that's just the nature of the law is constantly evolving. And so um, property report evolves, you know, in tandem with that. And so the content library that you see here is reflective of that. So you might see some sections within the report that I've highlighted. So um, that's a nice segue to um, talking about the law society <laughs> protocol. So when developing property reports, the content library um, we looked at hundreds of um, title reports from 
firms um, and then we refer to the available um, guidelines. Um, I always say that it's not enough to you know you know memorize the legislation and know the sort of legal um, aspects you know off by heart um, if you don't understand how it's used practically. So that's why, you know, not only did we um, look at the legislation, we did speak to hundreds of clients when developing this content to make sure that it worked on a practical level. Essentially, everything you see highlighted in yellow, if you go through the report, I got scrolling. Everything you see highlighted in yellow um, is essentially where in the protocol form, um, the guidance says to advise your client. So where you need to advise your client, where it's applicable to advise your client and where it's appropriate at this stage in the report, uh, in the conveyance to advise your client, you have that content available. Um, <clears throat> of course, you can see that there are alerts um, within the report. So though we read searches, um, the register and your SDLT and essentially uh, pull data from your case management and your file. Um, there are areas where we are unable to read, for example, the lease section. So as we're unable to read the lease, um, we do provide alerts in areas where we would like you to manually confirm whether that uh, information is applicable. For example, does the property have a share of a freehold? Um, how this is really risk mitigating and saves you time is because you don't have to go through every single section of the report anymore. When you were working in your Word document templates, there was this sort of need to cross reference and go through top to bottom of maybe a 30 page, 40 page um, Word document and manually remove the um, content or really be searching for that content that didn't apply here. You are alerted to that content straight away and you can untick or retick the content as you so wish. Um, of course, we always advise you to read all the content, but you know, once you're familiar with the text, um, you necessarily won't need to do that. So. Um, so and now I just jumped into it. So what you're seeing here is so when I generated a report, when you generate a report, you enter your matter number. And what it would do, it will pull information such as the property address, the name of the purchaser, your searches on file, um, because this is just an example. Um, I don't have any addresses. I'll just do a demo. So it will pull your matter. Um, you'll select the tenure type, the address is already pulled through, the title number is already pulled through, and the names are already pulled through, as well as the searches, and then you would click generate. And so what you've done here is you've actually asked the report about like nearly 200 questions. You said, um, I only want to see freehold content. This uh, title has a uh, possessory class of title. Please inform the buyer of the lender requirements and the insurance um, needs for that scenario. Um, and what you see here is that refined content. So um, something that we hear back from clients is that, um, you know, this is a large report and not all of the content is applicable. So um, what we always emphasize is that this is yours to tailor make, and it is refined to be as um, scenario specific as possible. For example, um, you will never see leasehold content here, although we have a back data of um, maybe hundreds upon hundreds of leasehold content because you've selected freehold, we've already removed that content for you. Um, within your searches section, you will not see um, for example, you will not see a contaminated land um, fail result content here because we've recognized within your search that it's a past result. And not only that, but you can cross reference by using these um, source, source I documents. It actually takes you to the exact section of the report.
So property report is split into um, four sections, five if it's a lease. So the first section is where we um, pull data from the register. Um, here we've pulled um, the address, the title number when it was recently purchased and for the purchase amount. Um, we can go to the register here. And again, you can cross reference. Um, the second section of the report is the inquiry section. So if you're familiar with our ECOS products, um, this is where your um, information for the TA forms and the uh, inquiries will go. We also have additional sections such as the fire safety um, or solar panels um, content that you may require or you might like to add again. So. This content we include with alerts because, um, of course, we can't confirm whether this information is applicable or whether you'd want to include the information um, in the first place. So, of course, we can't confirm whether there's a fireplace or chimney in the report. Um, the next uh, section is the searches. So here is where we would pre-populate data from your search results. So. Here you can see there is a um, building regulations entries. So not only do we pull those entries through, but we um, advise um, on the sort of resolution for that risk. So here it would be an insurance, um, obtaining an insurance. Um, so the next section is the mortgage report section. So we provide content for all the different types of mortgages that you may uh, be dealing with. And right now you see it all with alerts, but we're constantly trying to um, map data from all of our different data sources. So we work with LMS currently to hopefully pre-populate data such as the lender's name and the mortgage offer date. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. So again, to save you time and prevent, um, um, prevent further manual intervention essentially, which again, reduce risk. So the final section here is where you would um, talk about, you know, the later stages, um, like the completion process, your stamp duty, um, the payment of funds, etc. And here we allow for a lot of customizable text to sit. So if you were an admin, um, you can go into your settings in property report and actually put in customizable text um, for your payment and purchase funds um, and uh, um, additional points to consider. We also offer a summary statement. So that's it for my sort of overview of um, the property report and, you know, um, its ability to assist you in reporting um, to a high standard and complying with all the regulations um, uh, if you have any, I'll pass over to Faye if you have any further questions. I can see there's quite a lot, so I'm giving it a bit more time. Thanks, Liz. Yes, we have had quite a few come through. Um, the first one that's come through is, do you have word functionality so that you can highlight, bold, italic, etc.? Yeah, absolutely. So what was really important um, when we were um, sort of refining the product, um, when we were, you know, really satisfied with the content library we started adding these features that we knew um, you used in your regular title report so you are able to bold italic underline even cross out um, you can um, adjust the sort of those um, you can highlight and you can even add pictures um, i won't do that now but you can um, go into your library, select pictures and um, insert them directly into the report. Fabulous, thank you. And can you also have separate reports? For example, if you wanted to just report on searches, just report on title, etc. Absolutely, that's a really good question. So um, again, what you see is a very um, heavy report. Um, so what you would want to do perhaps um, to assist your buyer is reporting stages. So you can, of course, 
deselect the subsections and say you just wanted to do a title report, you would complete the uh, property detail section, you would go on to publish. You can also rename your report um, title, title report and um, because it's the title report, you may not want to um, attach all these documents, you may just want to attach the register. And when you click confirm, what you've done is you've generated a PDF that only um, includes the information on the title and it has a specific title report name and it only appends the register. Okay, that's great, thank you. And the next question is, is the, if the property is freehold but has a management company, does it include that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we provide specific management company text for freehold, um, leaseholds, and for new build freeholds. So you'll find management company text here, um, where we talk about you know, the um, FME1 form. Um, we also talk about it here, um, where you can talk about um, the intricacies of a management company, the responsibility of the buyer that may need to join the management company, and you know, all, those, all those scenarios the service charges, etc. I hope that answers the question. Lovely, thank you. Uh, next question, do you cover MDR on the SDLT section? Uh, yes, we do. What you'll see here is um, alerts in the SDLT section. So although we are able to read your SDLT and we are able to refine the content down to um, a considerable degree, um, we keep the alerts in this section because um, what often happens throughout uh, the conveyancing process is that um, the tax um, calculated in the early stages may have changed later on, for example, I, I always use the example of, you know, the buyer may have said they're a first time buyer, but they don't realize that um, the house that they inherited from, you know, um, a deceased relative actually counts as their, you know, as, as them, well, disqualifies them from being a first time, from the first time buyer relief. So um, we want, we keep this information with alerts to um, protect you and protect the buyer and ensure that the information published and sent to the um, buyer is accurate and up to date. Fabulous. Um, we've got another question and they said, um, I can see the advice is very brief. I take it we can add to it or delete what you have put there. And that also ties in with another question that we've had, mm -hmm. and text included within the report. So I think that's sort of both kind of similar questions there. Oh, sorry, could you repeat that again? <clears throat> um, if it, the advice that we've currently got in there is quite brief. Can we add to it or delete what you have put in there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can absolutely delete and add your own text. Um, you can also add custom text into settings. Um, for example, the executive summary. So this is sort of oh, wow. <laughs> this is sort of um, our default text that we provide for you. Um, when you are set up, but you can change this text to whatever you want to your firm, firm specific um, requirements. Um, once it's saved, it will be present for every single report that you generate. That's great, thank you. Um, another question is, is there advice on estate rent charges? Yes, absolutely. So estate rent charges, um, we actually are able to recognize when there's an estate rent charge on the register and then we provide that information within the report so what you see here so it will be in the property details section it would be um, just after class of title you aren't seeing it here because there is no estate rent charge on the register and so we don't provide that content where it's not relevant okay great and um, we've had a few questions in asking what's the cost of using this will we be discussing costs. Also, with regards to costs, questions, for example, if you do a title report, but then later want to do the searches report, are you charged twice? Absolutely not. So I'll just answer um, the question about payment first. So the product is free when you have a 
um, when you have searches and when you have searches on the matter. So if you have an environmental search, if you have a local authority search, now it can be a um, regulated or official, there aren't really any requirements there, when, or and a drainage and water search. When you have a new build, when you want to generate a new build report, we recognise that you won't always um, want to order a drainage and water for a new build because, well, there won't be any sewers or drainage to report on often. So um, when you want to generate a new build report, it's again free of charge if you just have the environmental and the official on the matter. Um, if you just want to make a report and your searches, you know, you haven't ordered any searches as yet, um, it's uh, 990. Um, to go back to the question about um, the ability to publish multiple times, you can publish as many times as you like, um, hundreds of times, and you will not be charged. You'll only be charged for the workspace that you create. So um, another question we've had in, if we do separate reports, for example, searches, property and mortgage reports, is there a charge to do the three separate ones or are we charged for doing more than one complete report? Then to answer that, the answer is no, it's one charge if you're not getting the searches or it's free if you are. Exactly. Just because there's a few questions, I'll just um, show how that would work. So you would have um, your report. Let's say you just wanted to make the title report. Oops, not that one. This one. You would confirm, click publish. And what it's, it, what it's doing is generating a PDF. So now what you see on the right hand side is that PDF that you've now generated. So now let's say that you want to report on your searches and the inquiries. You go back over here, edit report, and you're basically taken back to where you left off. So now let's remove um, these. And again, you would publish again, and now you only have the searches section and you would do the same. And again, you can do this 100 times over. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, can we use property report for commercial properties? Unfortunately, we only provide content um, for residential. I have seen people use the report for commercial properties and sort of ad hoc the um, you know references to residential and, you know, make it fit for a commercial uh, conveyance. However, um, if you have commercial searches on file, we won't read those. Um, so it will, so you won't benefit from the populate from the pre-population and you would have to manually input the data. Okay, that's great. Um, we've got another question. Where do the reports save back into InfoTrack if you're doing them separately? Where do they save back? So whether you save, generate a draft, publish, or just create the workspace, um, where you inserted your matter in the create workspace page, it will go and save within that matter. If you're um, using case management system, it will also um, be saved in your case management system. So it will be saved in this, in the matter that you enter here. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, I think, you kind of already answered this one earlier, you mentioned about pictures, but someone said, can we save um, our own template wording for the report to drop in or a version of auto text or quick parts? That's a really good question. So right now, so of course you have your custom text. So you have um, three spaces where you can put custom text. The executive summary at the top um, here. Um, you can also put custom text towards the bottom in your finance um, details, for example, like your bank details. You have a final summary statement that you can put custom text into. And when I say custom text, I really just want to emphasize that this is text that you would um, put in um, in your settings and it will be there every single time you generate a report. And of course, you can edit the report as much as you like, but that text it differently because you won't have to insert it every time. We are thinking of um, creating a sort of solution feature within the product where you can sort of save text so that let's say you make a edit in the air pollution section that you always insert like a, you always add a sentence here 
every single time you create a report. That sentence may only be applicable to your firm, so it won't be something that you could come to us and say, oh, this would be beneficial for you to have in the report. So it, it's specific for you. So we're thinking of perhaps adding a feature that would sort of bank that sentence so you won't have to type it or copy and paste it every time. Okay, great. Um, and can we in also insert flow charts or pictures into the report? Yeah, you can insert any type of picture into the report. Fabulous. Um, someone had said, you mentioned in the beginning that it was important to have everyone in the firm using the same report set up, etc. Mm -hmm. Is that a particular requirement by a regulation? Um, you didn't say why it was important, so I think they're just trying to understand why it's important. Absolutely. So, um, again, it's important to emphasize that there is no sort of law or regulation when it comes to reporting. Again, there's guidance, but there isn't anything that says you need to report on this. So, however, you see, um, you know, firms losing their license, um, solicitors losing their license, being fined, being disciplined because they haven't included certain content disclaimers or advice in a certain type of way. Now that's a lot of pressure on um, a firm to sort of, every time you create a report on title, it's not being checked by someone. You're trusted that the information that you input in there represents um, represents the firm and the sort of standard that they, they do. However, you know, there isn't any way to sort of oversee that. Um, what we do, here is that we provide content that will be consistent in all um, reports um, throughout the firm. Great, thank you. Um, and just one other question. Um, I think this is our last one for the moment. So if you do have any others, then please do submit them. But the um, final question I've got is, it's going back towards the costs again. So it's just to clarify what the charge is without the searches, please. Without the searches, it's 990. Um, so, um, with the searches, of course, it's it's free. Okay, that's great. Um, there was someone that mentioned that there was a little bit of background noise during the first part of today's webinar, so apologies for that. I think it was addressed, so hopefully it hasn't interfered with your enjoyability of today's webinar. Um, someone else has asked if the recording will be available um, for later today. Yes, we will be sharing a recording of this webinar with you um, once it's been processed. So I, we don't have any other questions. So I think we're probably able to bring this to a close now. So I'd like to say a big thank you, Liz, for your demonstration and your insights today and for answering all of those questions in relation to property report. And I hope everybody's found that very informative. Um, if you do have any other questions about anything you've learned today in relation to property report, or indeed anything else in, re in relation to anything else offered by InfoTrack, then um, please contact um, your account manager who will be more than happy to help you um, and assist you. So I think that, um, as I mentioned, this session is being recorded. So we will send you a copy so that you can refer back to it. So all that's left to say is a big thank you for everybody who's joined today and for taking part and listening. And thank you very much to Liz again for her time today and her insights. And I hope everybody's found this interesting and informative. Thank you so much for joining. Have a good day. Bye-bye.